This field has about four or five varieties. Um, some varieties are over there in the dry land and some are in the irrigated, so it's kind of hard to tell what variety has done the best. Although I know instant yield doesn't tell an average so far, but we are looking at 103 bushel instant, 104, well, you can see. Um, so far, over about 240 acres, this field has done, we'll round up and say 72. This variety is yielding the best. We're still at a 99.4 bushel an acre average right now. Um, and it is pulling the hardest so far. Um, about two and a half miles per hour is all this 771s. So you can see so far, I mean, it is only over three and a half acres, just averaging 100, which I know that's not very impressive. I'd much rather see a 100 bushel average over 200 acres or something like that to be impressed. I'm not really impressed over three and a half acres. Anyone can do that. Yesterday's video just uploaded an hour ago, and I'm reading the comments, and there's so many people telling me to cut soybeans at an angle. Evidently, y'all didn't see or notice that I was cutting at an angle. As you can see, that is at an angle. I don't know if the rows are planted on a true 90, but I did do a 92 angle, so I'm at a two degree angle. Most people who cut soybeans um, cut it at an angle. So every single 30 inches, there's a plant, at least on this field. Some people might have different spacings, but this is a 30 inch spacing. You might ask why I'm cutting it at an angle. Why don't you just pick a row and go down it? It seems pretty simple. If I were to go down a row, let's just say this one, let's just say I followed it all the way down to the end of the field, that plant every 30 inches would hit my sickle. Well, then there'd be a 30 inch gap and then it'd hit my sickle again, a 30 inch gap, hit it again. So. It would only be wearing out every 30 inches of my sickle. If I went at an angle, it'd be wearing out the entire sickle, just not as much. If I were to stay on a row and cut a thousand acres, I'm just gonna make numbers really easy, not that this is accurate. If I stayed on a row, let's just say this spot right here, 30 inch gap in another spot. Let's just say that wears out 20%. That's 20% over every single 30 inches through a 40 foot header. If I went at an angle and used the entire sickle, you know, through the pass, um, it would maybe only wear out 5% or 10%. So you're, you're minimizing your wear on one part of your sickle and using it through your entire sickle. Rather than wearing out a spot every 30 inches on your sickle, you know, this much, you wear out your entire sickle that much. Pretty simple. Okay, so we are just now getting into the other variety, so I'm gonna call it right there. We are at almost 20 acres, and that one averaged 88. That's why it's better to cut more acres to see what it's actually making um, than to cut three acres and say that's making 100. Header loss on these beans. There's one. There's one. There's still a couple. 
I'd say that's pretty doable. Not many at all. I think we're doing pretty good. These are a different variety. Pods look a little smaller than the other variety. A lot of two pods. There's two pod. There's a two. Three, 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 three. So beans are extremely hairy. Like the pod has a bunch of hair on them. I don't know if you can see that or not. They have little bitty micro hairs on them. That makes soybeans extremely dusty. And it also makes the combine extremely dirty. All right, let's go cut some beans. We are almost done with this field. Um, I only have two passes left and that should be it. Something's on fire. I mean, I'm on fire all the way up under here. That's on fire. I don't understand. There's death leaking. That's definitely death. I mean, it burnt hoses all up in here. That's all burning up in there. That's all burning up in there. That's burning. and we can get the hose in here and get it all rinsed off. Well, the next problem is when I start it, it's going to pour death out of it. 
Is it leaking it? Where? We're gonna see, there's death pouring out when I have the key on, so we're gonna see where that's leaking. Okay, so it's been a little bit. I totally emptied that. We're gonna have to refill that tonight or something because evidently we're gonna need it. So I blew this combine off last night. Evidently you need to blow the combine off two times a day. Um, I mean, look at, the, look at this fine powder. I mean, that is, super staticky um, and evidently going against the death system where it is extremely hot is very flammable but we did get the fire out and burned one death line John Deere is gonna come out tomorrow morning and see what they need for that I guarantee you they are not gonna have that line though um, we're gonna pull Tim's pickup around here that has an air compressor because a leaf blower is not gonna get as clean as I want to get it okay, okay. Just letting you know. Bye. All right, bye. Okay, never mind. So there's a John Deere mechanic on his way home right now that's going to swing by and see what they need. All I know is they need that death line, but John Deere's eyes are way better than mine. John Deere has made it really handy dandy to have a lot of hang spots. For instance, this cover right here, or right under it, is completely hollow. Why is that hollow? I have no idea. This whole plate is full of trash. Um, this whole plate right here is full of trash because, I mean, they have a hole right here just so dirt can get in there and get down under there. I, I don't know, dude. It's just frustrating, you know? Well, I got the combine blowed off. There is some paint damage. Um, and that one hose. So, I'm just blessed it's only that rather than an entire combine. Oh, I did get it blowed off. That way it doesn't start back up in the morning. Dad's friend actually said that his combine caught on fire yesterday in soybeans. So, evidently everyone's combines are going up in flames. So, John Deere ordered that line. It should be here either tomorrow morning or Thursday morning, which Thursday is supposed to rain. I think Wednesday night there's a chance, and then all day Thursday it's supposed to rain, so that's exciting. Mom and Dad did finish corn harvest about 20 minutes ago, so I'm pretty sure they're roading the combine over here right now, and hopefully they don't park too close to me. <laughs> I'm a little flammable. That way we're not scattered everywhere. Um, and then Mom, once we get this combine back going, is going to help me with soybean harvest, so that's pretty exciting. Kind of a crappy way to end the night, really, but I'm just glad it costed us one death line. I mean, that could have been way worse, and most importantly, everyone was safe, so. Near loss. Almost burnt down the combine. So I just got off the phone with Dad. He's going to row the combine over here. And mom said that her combine is due for a 50 hour. Well, we did a 50 hour on the exact same day. So I imagine in probably, I don't know, four or five hours of running, I'm gonna need to do a 50. And while I'm broke down, you might as well do a 50. So that's what I'm gonna do. Place your bets if you think I have to change my grease gun out with grease midway through this 50 hour service. Okay, 50 hour service is done. Do y'all clean off y'all's grease gun after you use it? Or are you a menace and just shove it back into the box? Me personally, I'm wiping it off. So, one thing that I learned today, even if you blow off your combine at night, it can still catch on fire from chaff tomorrow which I don't know if it was static or if it was just the DEF system getting hot. Um, it could be both. 
just a friendly reminder every single time you get out always look around but that is going to be it for today's video thank you all for watching and i will see you all tomorrow